Good morning, everybody. I hope that I'm there. You never can tell with these, uh, you know, what it's telling you through Zoom and on Facebook. It says you're live, but you don't see anything. I think I'm here. Um, so thank you to all of you who are um, tuning in. Um, this necklace that I'm demoing today is one that um, I've been wanting to demo for a while um, since our renewal collection launched. Um, it is one of the um, designs from that launch. So you've seen it, you've seen us um, share it before. You don't see anything? Um, I'm here. Ah. And there, now, it, now I'm live because you can tell because the delayed audio pipes in and I have to mute it real quick. So good morning, Marika. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Tanya from New Zealand. Hi, Tanya. I have a friend, a jewelry industry friend in New Zealand, and I always think I'm going to go visit her someday. Um, yeah, maybe someday. So um, hi, Irene. Thanks for the inspiration um, a couple of weeks ago when we did the wine charms. That was fun to finally bring those out. We've had those. You gave, gave us that idea many, many, many years ago. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, so what we're going to demo today is this, um, find the camera, this, um, what we're calling our gem wrapped succulent pendant. And it is um, our little succulent charm. Oops, try and get it so it'll stay in its place. Our little succulent charm that um, is suspended inside one of our stitch around teardrops. Um, the light's pretty powerful on there, so I hope you guys can see it okay. That's one of our um, stitch around teardrops, and those came out in, um, it was our hammer tone at the beginning of 2020. That was our launch of 2020 before COVID hit and everything shut down. But um, that launch was just full of, um, hi Vicki. Um, Vicki Lapp is one of our customers, Beat Inspirations in Alameda. Um, we should probably come see you, you're a lot closer. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, Hammer Tone launch was early 2020 and then COVID and, and everything was weird. Um, but the parts that, that stitch around teardrop that I'm using in this um, is, this is exactly what it's made for, um, for embellishing and then you the loop is made so that you can hang something easily from the inside of the teardrop. So I'm excited to show you guys a little wire wrapping around that today. Um, Julie's here, I think. Julie, Hello. can you hear me? Julie's here. She'll be um, keeping an eye on um, comments and uh, responding to things um, as they come up, if you guys have questions and stuff. And um, I'm keeping an eye on comments too, but I'll leave it to Julie to really respond to those. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch my camera and um, we can get started on demoing this fun project. So um, what I have here is one of our, these um, teardrop stitch arounds are available in two sizes. I actually have, I have some more examples underneath that I'll show you guys later, um, but I will pull this one out. So it, it is, comes in two sizes. We're using the um, the small, uh, the larger of the two. See if I can get our light adjusted a little better. We're using the larger of the two um, because I wanted it to fit that succulent pendant inside. Um, Whoops, that's not going to work. No light at all. Not not good for me. <laughs> um, and then we've got we'll have use some chain and um, we used this cute little Victorian bale on the original version. But I'm using copper today, so I chose our royal bale, which is available in copper. And then I have a clasp, a toggle clasp set, and um, a couple of jump rings. Um, and I think I'm going to use um, silver wire, or maybe I'll just stick with copper because I wanted I wanted to choose a wire that contrasted with the um, copper component, but it might be a little bit hard to see that. So, and I am using a 24 gauge. 
I'm going to open some copper 24 gauge wire and I, I need a piece about uh, 14 inches long. And um, something to consider. <clears throat> oh, you know what I don't have is I don't have my little spacers. Get some of those. I'm going to need some of these too. These are our three millimeter faceted spacers. Um, <clears throat> something to consider. You can use a lot of different beads for this. You can pretty much use any bead you want for this type of technique. Um, so you'll want to kind of gauge uh, how much wire you need to start with according to how wide, how big your beads are. And again, I've got some examples underneath we're going to talk about later. Um, so this original version has some little peridot rondelles and they are about six five-ish by four-ish millimeter. Um, today I'm using, I'm going to use some, um, uh-oh, where's my cutter? Here it is. I'm going to use some um, check glass, about the same size. And I used, I think, 14, no, 12. I needed 12 of those, three, six, nine, 12. Tuck the rest of those out of the way. And I need 13 of the spacer beads. These, the original ones and um, these ones I'm using today are really comparable in size. So I think that I can stick with the same count of, of beads that I need. And I need a piece of wire about 14 inches long. This is 24 gauge, this is artistic wire. But any um, any craft wire that you have um, will work. You just want it to be kind of softish. So a craft wire is really good. You could probably use a half a half hard wire on this too. Um, you know, whatever works for you. As long as it's not obviously, if it's super hard wire, it's going to make it harder. Still trying to make sure I got enough light here for me to work. Oh, Tracy is mentioning that the um, succulent charm comes in um, three different finishes. So it's it would be fun to do some more mixed metal combinations. I'm going to stick with the um, copper and copper for today. So the first that I've got my piece of craft wire, it's about 14 inches long. Um, I'm going to anchor the wire to this. This top loop of this teardrop is like this little elongated um shape and um, like i was saying we did that with this part so that you can hang something inside it it's got a loop big enough to allow that um so the to start my wire up i'm going to thread this through just about an inch and then i'm going to wrap i'm going to hold on to that end i've got a little kink at the end of my wire which is not going to make things easy so i want to straighten that a little bit So I've got that focus. Focus is really good today. Oh, that's good to hear. So I'm gonna thread, I threaded that through front to back and then I'm gonna thread this through, thread it around and through to anchor it. And I'm just tightening that a little bit. And that's probably enough to keep it secure if I tighten it good from both ends. Hi, Danielle. Hello, Danielle. She um, she heard me. She could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I'm going to come back around and thread it through. Whoops, no, wait. Do I want to start? Do I want to start? stringing oh okay before i thread that through again i'm gonna i'm gonna add one of my little um three millimeter faceted spacer beads danielle can you see my bracelet i'm wearing today it's one of my favorites danielle made this 
for us um, using our little stitch in links. And I promptly claimed it as um, my, my favorite and I wear it regularly. <laughs> so I've got my little three millimeter faceted spacer on there and now I'm gonna come around And without trying not to twist my wire too much, and I'm also handling my wire very gently because um, I don't want, I've got to go all the way around this hoop and I want to be careful about work hardening. I don't want it to get, start really getting stiff and even risk breaking it um, at the end by the time I get all the way around the end. I don't want my wire to be so work hardened that it breaks. So I'm going to handle it very gently. <clears throat> when I'm pulling it through, as I pull it through, so I've got my faceted spacer um, on, I'm going to thread this through again. What gauge wire is that, Tracy? 24. And I'm going to wrap this around. And again, just being very gentle with my wire. I'm not keeping a grip on it. I'm kind of letting it, letting go of it in between um, wraps because I don't want to get it twisted. So I've got my little got my little faceted spacer on there and he's kind of loose, so I'm trying to tighten that up a little bit. And this is also where I can decide if I'm going to just wrap once or for example, I could wrap twice around before I pick up the first gemstone. Um I could go one more time around. I could go three times around if I wanted to really take up some space, but I think I'll just stick with the original plan. So I wrapped around once and then I came back through and then I'm gonna pick up my first check glass bead. And what I should have done before I started was made sure that the holes in my beads fit my wire. But these are check glass beads, um, they're not gemstones. So the, the wire, I mean, the holes are very consistent and very reliable. But if this had been gemstone, I would have really wanted to check that before, um, before like demoing like this and then finding out that the holes and the beads didn't fit the wire or something. So what I did here, because I want this bead, this um, check glass bead to kind of sit straight as kind of aimed outward from the teardrop shape, I just bent my wire a little bit to, um, give it a more kind of horizontal surface to sit on. Otherwise it will do this. It will sit angled to the, um, to the uh, side of the teardrop. So I gave it a little bend. Now I just got to position it up on the bend. And once you get going, this all, it will all kind of, the, everything will kind of fit into place a little better, but I just, Tip, use my um, chain nose pliers to uh, tip that straighter a little bit, and then I'm going <clears> to <throat> do another wrap with the wire. And I also want to keep make an effort to keep my um, my beads tucked close to each, to each other for this particular design. On another design, I might um, I might space them out more. And I got my next spacer, uh, my next little uh, faceted spacer on there. Tracy, were you going to show the um, design that you're doing when you use the opening hoop? I have um, a whole tray of other examples to show you guys after we're done with the demo. And that does include uh, working with the opening hoops. Only because it's interesting to watch you feeding the wire through the loop. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the opening hoop makes that much easier. It does. So that's what I will show a little bit of um, when we're done with this. Cool. So um, what Julie's talking about is we're using our stitch around teardrop to do, to wire wrap around, which is, you know, very much, it's very, um, very well suited to this technique. Um, now, did you guys see what I did there? I just took my chain nose pliers and twisted my bead a little bit to make it sit up straight. Um, 
we have other components that you can do this with, including um, we have a stitch around component that's a round shape. We have many ring components in our link, in our collection of links. We have um, what we call our wire, what do we call those, Julie? Our charm keeper hoops. We have our charm keeper hoops, which is a collection of wire, brass wire rings that have a hook. So they open and close and they come in three sizes. So that's what she's talking about. Um, when you're doing a wire wrapping project with that particular um, component, since you can open the hook, and I'll demo this after, but uh, since you can open the hook, it makes it really easy to um, feed your wire around. And it's so it's really fun, kind of fun to use that one for this for this technique. We call them opening hoops. Opening hoops. I thought we just on the website, aren't they called charm keeper hoops? I think th there's a design we do with them. Uh, that we okay. call them. It's, yeah, that's yeah, a more fun name. Yeah, there's a um, a design on the website that uh, that Julie can share a link to that shows you this technique using that component. I've done it already. You showed that link? Yeah. Yeah, it's a cute little pair of earrings. When those, um, you guys caught a glimpse of what's under this tray. When that, when those components came out, and that was in 2018, Julie, right? Because it was part of, whoops, let's pay attention you to my wrap. You quiz me on the dates and I never remember. <laughs> um, those were, those Charm Keeper hoops came out with our Worlds Away um, so that was 2000. So that was one of our mini collections from 2018. And um, I remember when we were designing, whoops, I threaded a bead on and it vanished. Do you guys ever have that happen? Um, I went crazy doing all kinds of wire wrapped stuff with those. It was really fun. And I wear them those, every day. What's that? I wear the opening hoops you, every day. That is your everyday earring, isn't it? It is. We might have to put you on video and show those, Julie. Not today. <laughs> so the Worlds Away collection was June of 2018. So boy, that was a... Yeah, it was a little while ago. Yeah, it seems like yesterday. Yeah. So I'm just um, straightening my little, my little um, beads as I go. And if you guys can see this, because I'm talking and working at the same time, I missed a wrap. So I've been going around once after each bead and then coming around again to add the second bead. I missed one, but you know what? I'm not too concerned about it. It's just a reminder to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, once this is all done, you would have to look really closely to even notice. So, you know, this is a forgiving technique. And if I was smart, I've also would have done a step out version of this too. So you guys didn't have to watch this, this somewhat slow technique. I guess you could get faster at it if you did it a lot, but. The project is on the website and I've linked mm -hmm. to that. So if yeah, somebody so did the want to watch, they could find the instructions. Mm -hmm. I also am really hoping that I didn't short myself on the wire. I um, I guesstimated my 14 inches. I hope I gave myself enough. Let's check what your instructions say. Well, they say 14 inches. I just didn't use a measure. I didn't use a ruler. This is my demos, Julie, are a very good example of read the directions and do what they say instead of do instead of doing what Tracy does on the demo. You keep it, you keep us on the edge of our seats, Tracy. There you go. Adds it adds a little bit of suspense. <laughs> you can also use 26 gauge wire um, is really nice for this too. Um, it's just much, it's a little bit softer and a little bit finer and 
14 inch piece of craft wire. Mm -hmm. I knew what I was, I knew what I meant when I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remembered it. Yeah. So, here, well, I've got the printout um, sitting right next to me. I just didn't have a chance to read it thoroughly. All right. So I'm going to make a design decision on the fly because I am worried that I didn't give myself quite enough. I'm going to just spread these out a little bit. I got four of the check glass beads down one side and one the first one coming up the second side, maybe. Yeah, I'm just going to spread it all out a little bit. Gretchen is pointing out that these make great, these could make great earrings also. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially, well, it depends on if you're a big earring, whoops, I almost missed a wrap again. If you're a big earring girl or a smaller earring person, um, mm -hmm. that smaller teardrop would work, make really cute little earrings. We have was, all sizes. I was surprised, Julie, when I was looking through our um, earring sample, I mean, our jewelry samples for this, yeah. these designs, I was surprised that I hadn't done any wire wrapping around the, um, <clears throat> I'm definitely gonna run out of wire. I hadn't done any, wire wrapping samples around the hoops, the little stitch around hoops. But then I remember that's because we were so focused on seed beading, bead weaving with that line. So oh, I'm we, surprised you didn't do a project with them also. Well, we did, we were just do, using brick stitch. We were going around the, this component and the stitch around hoop are awesome for brick stitching around. So wow. that's what we focused on so much. Well, you can't do it all. Right. But that is just something to remember to do later. All right, guys, I'm running out of wire. Apparently 14 inches is longer than I think it is. Shorter. <laughs> no, I cut my wire too short. Oh, you didn't measure it? No. I'm terrible about that. You guys- Now I'm with you. Mind me. Don't guesstimate on my lengths. Just just measure it. Get the ruler out. <clears throat> Tracy's demonstrating what not to do right now. <laughs> well, I'm adjusting the design on the fly is what I'm doing. I'm running out of wire, but I'm seeing <clears throat> if I can spread these. Remember at the beginning, I was talking about how for this one, I kept all of the, the beads tucked up real close to each other. And that was intentional. I wanted them nice and a bunch of them on there. So that's how I started out. But um, since I'm running short on wire, what I'm doing now is just seeing if I can spread everything out and get it spread out enough where I can make it to the end. I, I think I'm. it's a pipe dream, but you know, I can try. We're loving this design. It's a good one. It's fun to do. And Irene is asking if there's an instruction for the brick stitch too. And I do know there is, so I'm going to look for it. Yeah, there are. Um, there's a couple of brick stitch designs on there. I think there's one um, mm -hmm. for that wonderful bracelet that goes around the inside. The yes. beading is all done around the inside. Um, well, okay, guys. So when you make this, follow the instructions carefully. Cut minimum, four, minimum 14 inches of wire. Um, even maybe give yourself a couple inches more just for, just for variation in work tension too. Um, this wire felt a little bit stiffer than the silver craft wire I used for this one. So that may also have affected how I ended up coming up so short. But, um, you know, is what it is. You guys could see, you guys could see the technique and what I was doing. And then what I would do if I still had enough wire is I would continue coming around and finish off by wrapping around inside this loop the way I started on this on the first side. Actually, I have a lot of I got a lot of tail over here. I wonder if I can 
wonder if I can squeeze a couple beads in using the tail. That would be an interesting fix if it works. I'm going to try it. Lynn says, always cut a couple inches more than you need. That is just a perfectly good recommendation right there. It's, it's a smart thing. Well, this little demo design isn't going to be a keeper. I'll just, you know, demo it and take it apart. And, um, but that's a good suggestion right there. Always cut more than you need. You're so thrifty. Tracy, I don't know. People probably don't know that about you. It's a terrible habit. I end up <laughs> I end up shorting myself all the time because I'm I tend to be very frugal. I like the word frugal, Julie. I, I'm trying to come up with um, an example of how you are that way because it's rampant throughout everything you do. But of course, I can't think of anything. I do. I, I try not to be wasteful. All right, so. Imagine you guys, we've gone, we've done our wire wrapping all the way around. We've, we finished off our tail through the, um, through the long loop like we did on the, like we started, just wrapped it around in there. And then if it had gone accurately, I would have then just kind of pulled that snug against the back and trimmed it off really close to the back of the um, component. Um, so then what's gonna happen here is I need space um, I need space in these loops to hang the rest of my, um, attach the rest of my components. So um, I'll be attaching the bale with a jump ring up at the top and the little succulent charm at the bottom. So I'm just going to take a pair of uh, an awl and kind of nudge that wire out of the way so that I'll be able to get a jump ring in there. Maybe I need to do that on the back side too. And I was forcing that jump ring so much that I bent it all out of shape. So I'm going to get myself a new one. It is being very resistant today. Letting everybody know how to fix things. Huh? You're letting everybody know how to fix things. Yeah, you always, I mean, jewelry design is part engineering, you know, you often have to adapt. I remember a wire wrapping class I took with Kate Richford years ago and she just said you have to be the boss right you have to be the boss of it i've heard kate say that and she's so right no matter what you're working with mm -hmm. i kind of got to be the boss danielle let us know reminded us that uh the bracelet and the uh, another pair of earrings we were talking about are the mosaic right and i'm putting links to those because they are so gorgeous Okay, so we've got our bale attached up at the top. And I'm taking another jump ring and threading it through the loop at the bottom underneath all that wire that I was trying to move out of the way for the uh, bale. And I'm popping the little charm on there. I, Irene, Irene, Irene says she'll take she'll take this sample. You don't have to oh, take no. it apart. I would not send this out to anybody, Irene. Sorry, I'll do another one for you though. <laughs> and so there we go. We've got our very widely spaced, not at all like the original example wire wrapping, but it's pretty cute. And I do Tanya love- mentioned that she loved, and I don't know, I, I apologize if it's Tanya, 
Uh, Tanya or Tanya mentioned that she loved the tiny awl you used and she wondered if you knew where she could get one. This particular one? No, I don't know. It's um, been in the shop for a million years, but you can find a beading awl at pretty much any of your jewelry supply stores um, online. Or I mean, it's pretty much considered a basic, a basic tool. So any bead supply store should have awls and any of your online guys too. Um, so to finish this, obviously, we would take some chain, thread it through that bale. And then, looks pretty good, Tracy. Yeah, well, it, you know, it was enough to demonstrate the technique. Um, I would really, and it says this in the instructions for the original one, I would really make sure you keep all your beads tucked up nice and close to each other so that you get that nice kind of full wrapped, full wrapped look. So um, I'm attaching the clasp components now. It's a toggle, of course. So um, ring on one side, bar on the other. And just wanted to mention that with toggle bars, depending on what you're attaching to, with chain, it's not so much of an issue because the whole thing's very flexible. But in a lot of cases with the toggle bar, if I was, uh, if I was attaching it to a, for example, a bracelet that had big, was a strong bracelet with big beads on it, I would want to use at least two jump rings here so that your toggle bar has enough room to wiggle around. Most, you know, pretty much anybody who's been making jewelry for a while, you already know that, but I just thought I'd mention it. It's a good tip. Vicki from Bead Inspirations has the little all and she posted a link, so that's super. Yeah, Vicki, do you do online sales? Does your store sell online? It must. In this day and age? Yeah, everybody's got it. Um, so that's the necklace, you guys. Um, so I showed you a glimpse of this um, earlier in the demo and just wanted to show you guys all of the other great um, <clears throat> components that you can use this um, technique with for wire wrapping around. So I just used our teardrop component and we have the smaller one, we have the larger one. And then these little, um, these ones are, we call these stitch around teardrops and we call these ones stitch around hoops. So the um, little hoops are great too for doing smaller, more delicate ones. I, you guys um, were listening when I was just talking to Julie about how when I was looking for examples of wire wrapping on these, I didn't have any because when we came out with these, we were just using seed beads and beading thread and brick stitching like crazy but I will have to try that use some tiny little beads and do some wire wrapping around these ones um, our hammer tone rings are great for this Julie I couldn't find an example here well actually I'll admit I didn't look that hard I meant to bring one in that I had at home where I had um, did done some wire wrapping on, around one of our hammer tone rings but they were great for that as well and it's, and the ones that you um Highlighted for the Ruth uh, Ginsburg Memorial. Was that one of those? Oh, let me grab those. That's a good example. No, that was around, um, I used the, um, the, big, the biggest hammer tone ring for that. You thought it looked like her collar. And it, yep. it made you feel like it had her spirit, I remember. Yeah, let me find it. There's a project for that on our site, yes, on our I, website. I did. So you guys, I'm just fishing now in the, in the box. It's got all of these hammer tone teardrops. And um, we really did have a great time using Brick Stitch with those. For wire wrapping. called cloud nine earrings and yeah. i'm going to link the project i got them right here i'm just 
I'm distracted. It's like shiny, you know. <laughs> That's a good way to be with beading. Yeah, so you can see um, brick stitching around these is just super fun. And when, but I've forgotten, these are, these are definitely a wire wrapped thing, Julie. I just didn't think of them when I was pulling out examples. So this is the one she's talking about. It's um, a little bit of a different wire wrapping technique. I, um, <laughs> that is not what I was talking about. No, it's, it's different. It's used, I used, I used like a two strand piece of wire to put the pearls on. And then I attached it with um, little individual wire wraps at, you know, so it was quite different, but oh, still. That is what I was talking about. I was looking at a delayed screen. <laughs> That's perfect. Ah, but it is a different, it de uh, definitely a different technique, but it shows how to, um, you can use wire wrapping for some of our rings too, which was the point of showing that. And then um, we were talking about the opening hoops. So what is cool about these little charm keeper hoops is, is that they have a hook. They're brass wire, so they're very sturdy. Um, and they have a hook that just pops around the, um, pops around the loop stem there. And so obviously three sizes of those. And that's what we were, um, we did a lot of wire wrapping around those when we launched that, um, when we launched that uh, little mini collection that had these wire hoops in them. So this design um, is also on the website and I will demo that just a little bit to show you guys how easy it is to, um, to use that opening hoop to do this. So I've got one here, I'm gonna move some of these out of the way. You can see, look at how crazy I went. I used gemstones and, and seed beads and crystal. Really had a good time doing that with these. So if I was gonna wire wrap around this, I would open up the hook. I would, go, I would attach my wire up here at the top, right underneath the um, the loop. Tuck those all up next to each other. And gonna need some beads. Did you guys notice there how much more wire I gave myself? <laughs> Gretchen said, if you need 14 inches, cut 20. Smart, smart. <laughs> All right, so now because I have this opening, instead of loop uh, threading it through, I can just go right through the opening. Can you, did you guys see that? Just popped it through there. We need slow motion. Okay, I'll do it very, you know, when they're replaying this, I've been loading all of our um, Facebook Live demo videos also up into YouTube. So when, if you guys watch this on YouTube, then you can slow it down. Okay, so here's the bead. I'm bringing it behind. I'm bringing it over to where that opening is. And just being careful, I don't get it stuck on the hook. I'm just popping it through there and back up next to the bead. Was that slow enough? Uh, Vicki is asking you to show it close up, which I think you are. Oh, we could get a little closer. So um, I'm just doing my in-between wrap now, but see how the opening is here? I just can pop it through there. And again, I'm giving my beads a little bit of a twist up at the top so I can get them, try and get them to sit straight. All right, close as I can get it. Wrapping it around behind, popping it through the opening of the hook there and bringing it back up. That was really good. You did a okay. good job. 
So that is how I made these ones. These ones, I use little um, size six seed beads. Now, when I got all the way down to the bottom, I wanted to attach a charm. So I'll just do that here. So I've got a bead on. I'm going to come around and do like that second, second loop. And then I'm going to string on a little charm. And I, since I want that charm to have a little wiggle room, I'm going to kind of make a loop, a loop in the wire that hangs a little bit lower. I don't want it to be tight on the um, on the wire. So I'm just making a little loop. Then bringing my wire back around. And doing another small wrap to secure it. And that's how I would attach a charm on there. And then I can continue with the beads. When I was in um, college, Julie, I had a professor who would always say at the end of her lectures, she would always say questions, comments, concerns. That was her closing lines. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a good one. Questions, comments, concerns. Let's so this, see. Yeah, I reading. don't see any concerns. You've answered everybody's questions. And we have had wonderful comments the whole time. So, Yay. so far, so good. Well, cool. So that's kind of it for that particular demo. There is a project sheet downloadable. Well, I think Julie shared many of them. Um, there's one for this, the gems, the gem wrapped succulent pendant. There's one for this little earring right here that I was just kind of demoing the technique for that. So yeah, lots of stuff for you guys to find on the website. Tracy, how, you know, I get confused. How much of this is on the blog? I mean, when should people, well, they should always go to the blog, but. Techniques. Um, I don't, I don't put individual projects on the blog unless it's, um, unless it's part of a, like a product launch, um, part information sort of thing but usually um usually the blogs aren't individual projects so you can look at the blog for techniques um when we were doing some swarovski stuff julie those projects got those individual projects got their own blog posts but generally no um oh, i think that's what i saw is that you would link uh, from the blog, I think you'd link to the technique of what you just showed. Yes, I try to do that. I do that on um, all of our project inspiration pages. Um, I try to, you know, I try to direct them to which DIY blog post has the video for that technique. So, oh, Lynn wants you to show your Luna Moth necklace, please. The one I'm wearing? Yes. Okay, this is just a. <laughs> It's not one that's been demoed. It's not one that's on the website. It's just one I put together for myself because I wanted my own to wear. Somewhere back here, there's a lobster clasp. Let me um, switch my camera again because you guys can see it better if I do it that way. Look how good you're getting at switching that camera back and forth. Without turning the video off entirely. Yeah, getting better. <laughs> So this is um, some lovely, um, let me find the name of this cord. It's a, it's a suede lace, but it's got a nubuck surface. So it's very nice. It's not just like suede on both sides. It's from Leather Cord USA. Wow. And it's called, this is the wider one, but it's a, called nubuck. So that just means that the, there's this very nice smooth surface. Um, and the other side then is the suede lace type of surface. So I just took some of that and wire wrapped um, it to some of our twisted links, little twisted, what do we call these, Julie? 
twisted think links. I mean, twisted bead. Twisted, twisted bead. Spacer, but you know what? That's yeah. a cool way to use that large hole spacer there. Yes, yeah. I wanted, I didn't want to just use a jump ring. I wanted something a little more decorative, a little more decorative. So that worked super well for that. And then I just put a tiny little piece of appetite at the bottom. So that's it. Was that Lynn that asked? Ooh, I love the way you use that spacer. I'm going to put a link to that spacer. There you go. All right, so that's it. That's all we got. That was thank a lot. Thank you guys for um, popping in and watching. Remember, follow the instructions on the printed sheet and don't do what I did and short yourself on the wire and um, and your project should go absolutely fine. And um, it really is fun to experiment with different beads for this technique. You know, these little check glass rondelles are great, size six seed beads are great. Um, gemstones of all sizes and shapes, really fun. So um, Julie, thanks for, uh, for being the moderator and keeping everybody company. And uh, I don't know what we're gonna do next week yet, but um, we'll get it figured out and we'll uh, post about that later on in the week. So, all right. Thank you, you guys. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.